So up to now, what we've been doing is mainly looking at how to create a database, how to populate it with data, how to manage that data, and, we, and of course the last time we, our, our last uh, lesson was on forms, uh, subject forms, uh, where we basically build a, a method to have a dialogue, we call it dialogue, uh, with the system. In other words, we, we built a method that we can uh, allow information to pass into the system in a fairly smart manner, uh, constraining things as we need them, uh, generating uh, new information through things like uh, an expression on a derived field, uh, and even giving them some kind of idea of uh, little messages, you know, where, we, where conditions may not have been met correctly. Um, in lesson four now, we're going to really turn to just the visualization of the data. In other words, we're not going to interact with the data very much here. We're going to take data that exists, and we're going to create different kinds of visuals with it using different methods. Um, as industrial engineers, obviously one of the main things we're asked to do is to create reports based on the analyses that we do. And those analyses come from ex exploring the data, basically. Now, sometimes those analyses are really in-depth. You know, you may do a, an operations research model, or you may do a discrete event simulation model. Uh, you know, things where you're basically, yeah, using the set of data or generating a set of data from the method itself. And that could be in a database or work with a database. But it, there's a lot of work that needs to be done to get, just get data into, the, uh, into a, a format that's needed to be reported. Okay? We, don't, we can't do anything like that directly in Access. All right? Access could be behind the scenes holding the data for us. What we could do in Access, though, is do interesting aggregations of the data that we already have in the database. And often when we aggregate, what we do is we aggregate based on a category. All right? Now, we could aggregate a court across all the records. Now, what do, what do I mean by aggregate? A simple mathematical operation typically is an aggregation. So instance, for instance, if I summed up all my sales that I had in a certain category, that would be an aggregation of, say, the sales on books. If I looked at the expenses I had in that category, that would be an aggregation of the expenses on books. And then, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm pointing down here. I should have been pointing up above. This is the aggregation of the sales on books. This is the aggregation of the expenses on books. And then I could have a derived field where I determine the profit, which is no more than, than the sales, what I brought in on the sale, minus my expenses, right? So that's what we call aggregating it across a category. We could also have an aggregation for all categories. And I've got that here at the bottom of this report where I have a uh, summary of all the sales that I had in, the, in whatever time period this was over, and then how much it cost me to do those sales, and then that would be my profit. So you can see this is something that would be really handy for if I was doing my taxes every year. You know, I would generate a report like this. This is a typical thing that you would maybe see a financial group do, but it's also a thing that industrial engineers do very often. Or, or that I do have a uh, a little area down here where I say how many records were in here all together. I could have that actually for each one of these if I wanted to. And you might also notice over here in the profit area, I have different colors to indicate whether I made a profit or it was zero or I lost on it. Okay, and when I lost now is in red, but uh, I've got a uh, uh, parentheses around it to indicate it was a loss. Okay, it's a negative value. Uh, without saying that having a negative parentheses is something that, that financial guys use a lot to say that I, they had a loss. So anyway, this is a nice little report, and we're going to try to duplicate this in the tutorial that we have tonight. Again, the whole purpose of this, this lesson is to teach you how to do aggregations in a single uh, subject table. But most of the reports you'll ever do will really involve multiple subject tables or at the very least, joins on the, on the uh, uh, category relationship. We will see that later when we get to lesson six in the class. We'll learn how to do that. But for now, we're just going to do a simple aggregation on a, a single subject table. So I'm going to close this one down, and we're going to go to the tutorial file. 
and here's the tutorial file. Uh, I've got a subject that I call auctions. So these are auctions that I do on eBay and I've got information about the auction item number. That's unique, right? And it's required. So what does it tell you? That's an alternate key field. And I've got an item name. You know what? Most of the time, I, I think these are typically unique too, but they don't have to be, okay? So, but it is required, okay? I've got the uh, item type, and this is a lookup that I can pick from and get information. Of course, I can get my my lookup uh, form if I want to add or change the name of any of these. And then I have uh, information about the various costs and, and profits I made on, or I should say costs and, and, and sales that I made on this. So I have the acquisition cost, I have a, uh, a listing fee, I have a reserve that I could put on this on the auction itself. A reserve is that it has to at least uh, have a bid of that much or else I, I don't sell it, obviously. Uh, the starting bid, uh, the buy it now price, a lot of times you go in and say, uh, you know, for $50 you, you can buy it right now. In other words, the, the, the auction will be off as soon as somebody hits a buy it now. Uh, the best offer, uh, reserve price, uh, so I could actually <laughs> have a buy it now of a certain amount, but I could say, hey, if they gave me $5 less than that, I wouldn't even consider that, you know, but I'm not going to go any lower than a certain amount. If they give, if they come in and say, uh, I'm going to give you $3 for something that I got listed as, with a reserve of 50 it won't accept that. So it's the kind of things that you do on eBay, basically. There are different uh, levels that they allow the auction to have. Uh, when the auction closed, in other words, you know, when did it, when did it uh, stop, you know, the date did it stop, uh, and I could even have when I actually listed it too, uh, but I'm just going to keep track of when it closed. The number of bids I actually received on it, the winning bid, um, and then a set shipping cost that, that's involved in doing it, and then the actual shipping cost. So what you know, typically when somebody wins a bid, they also have to pay the shipping cost, and that's a set cost. But you know, there's sometimes you'll set a cost, and then you go to the to the uh, uh, post office, and you find out it's actually going to cost you more. Now I'm, I do a pretty good job of knowing that what the actual cost is, but there's sometimes there's a little bit of a delta difference, and then any overhead that's associated with doing this. So the overhead type things could be things like uh, the mailing envelope or um, uh, any kind of wrapping, special wrapping of the, of the package that needs to happen in order to send it. Uh, and then there, there, there's other overhead beside the overhead of the auction, but we're only going to look at the overhead due to the auction. And then any notes about that, these are my typical standards and the notes, the attachments, and, and the data revisions if I want to do that. So I've got a nice database already here. It's got 207 records in it. Um, Nice little data table, ready to go. Uh, it has a relationship to that uh, auction item. And so I've got that set in the category relationship. And I've built the uh, category um, form. And I've, I'm sorry, the lookup form. And of course, I've also built already, let me just close this down, the subject. Form. Let me open up the subject form so you can see that. So here's the subject form for this, and you see it's got the drop down where here I got. I actually have two things that you could search with. Uh, the well, actually, I should say I have a combined. Uh, I combined two fields, and I'll show you how to do this uh, later in the semester, where I could have more information than just the. Uh, alternate key, the single field alternate key field. We can actually show a, uh, a co combination of several fields if it helps uh, people understand what they're what they want to navigate to. So I can click one of these and it'll take bring up the information about that. That general information. And you see it. You know, I've got the eBay item number which is required and the item is required. That's why they're circled in gold here. And I even got a uh, a little thing here that shows what the profit is. I've got a, uh, de a derived control where I actually have a formula that shows what the profit is. I'll show you that right now. 
I go in here and you can see the formula for it. It's right here. I'm going to bring it up in a what's called expression builder so you can see the whole thing. So it basically says take the winning bid and then add the shipping cost and then so that gives me uh, how much I brought in the set shipping and the winning bid that tells me how much I'm receiving from uh, the winning bidder and then I subtract my costs which are uh, the item with how much the item cost me to begin with the listing fee the actual shipping cost and then any overhead that's involved in it so you know again it's it's my it's my uh, sales versus my expenses and that gives me my profit we're going to do the same kind of thing in a different way, okay? By the way, you can see down here that I actually have that same calculation for the expenses, and I have a calculation for the profit. I'm, I'm sorry, for the sale. Now, some people might think right off the bat, why don't you just take this field, and, uh, why don't you just name this control and subtract this control? And you could do that in a form, but it turns out the way we're going to do it is through a query, and we won't be able to do that. You have to put the complete expression in the query, and I'll explain that in a second. Uh, but anyway, you see on my form, you know, and it's typical like, like what you've been working on in the homework. All right, I want to create that, that report. But before I do that, consider that report did not show all the fields that are in this form right, or in this database right now. It's not going to show the acquisition cost that was to be separately. It's not a column in there, okay? All I'm going to have is something that basically tallies up all the sale fields, and another one tallies up all the expense fields, and then it has this thing called the profit field, all right? So, and even some of these things. I'll have the eBay number and the item name and the item type is actually the category that we're going to group things on. We're going to group records on in our report. But you also see that I don't have the attachment, I don't have the notes, I don't have the data revision. So I'm going to actually limit the number of, of uh, columns here, the number of fields that I'm going to see in the report. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I want to have the ability not to show all of them. Some of these did not result in, a, in an auction that, that uh, sold the product. I only want to show the ones that actually sold. So not only am I going to limit the number of, uh, I mean the attributes, I should say the fields of the table in the report, but I'm also going to limit the number of records that are in there too. And we did that through a query. And a query by itself, a select query it's called, a select query by itself is a way to visualize your data. So right off the bat, we're going to create an object that will help us visualize our data even before we have the reports. So to build the query, and I'm now in step one of the tutorial, to build the create query, go to create, and um, make sure your auction table is highlighted, and go in and do a query design. All right. Now, I said the highlight auction. Sometimes it will come back with auction in here automatically, and other times it doesn't. Depends what version of Access you're using. In the newer versions of Access, you actually have to pick this now. So, just say add, have, have auction highlight, and say add, and it's in here now. Another way you could have done it is just close that down and drag that in there. So now I have the auction table, basically, bound to this query. And you can see I got a listing of all the fields in it. Now we've seen queries already. We saw a query when we did the uh, row source for a lookup table, and we saw a query when we did the row source for a for the find record uh, control in our subject table, uh, the thing that helped us search for new records. Uh, queries are pretty much uh, a, a, this, this is called the uh, 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 query design grid view. And what it will do is it will help us actually create what's called a select query in, in, in SQL format. And again, I showed you that before. I'll show you it again tonight. But the parts of the query is you have the, the source table, and then you'll have the grid where you actually say what fields you want to have, and you also can constrain 
the values that would be brought back, uh, the records that would be, back, be brought back based on val based back, uh, based on the criteria for each one of those fields, or, or any one of those fields, I should say. And then there's actually properties that of the of the um, of the query itself, and we won't see this for. A, well, actually, I'll talk about this a little bit later on. So let's work on this one first, and then we'll come back and talk about queries in general a little bit. So the first thing I want to do is I want to drop in the fields that I need in order to create that report. Now, even now, I'm going to drop in fields that won't appear in the report, but they're needed in order to do calculations in derived controls for that report. And what we're going to do, instead of having a derived control on the report, we're going to create what's called a derived field here in the query. In other words, I'm going to create a field in the query that won't be present back in table auction, but it will allow us to have a calculation that appears as if a field exists and it's done a calculation. So what I need in this one, and this is going to surprise you because usually we're used to drop it and making sure that the primary key is in this. You don't need a primary key for this one. Uh, this is very different than, than when you do uh, any kind of relationship where you do a subject table. All I need right now is I need, uh, and by the way, the way the, I drop it in is the way it's going to appear in the data sheet that will come up when I run this query then. So I want to get a good order here. So I'm going to start out with the close date. And it's right down here, and I'm going to drop it in. I'm dragging that down there now and dropping it in. And now that's in there. I want the eBay item to be next. Actually, I want a few of these in a row to be next. See, I want the uh, eBay item number, the item, uh, this uh, item type record identifier. And I want those three together. I can click the first one, hold down my shift key, click the last one. Now they're all picked, and I can just drop them here, and they will go in in order then. And I know sometimes you can't see the whole name here. You can expand these out so you can see the whole field name if you want to do that. After a while, you just get really used to doing it and trust the thing over there to do, to do the right thing for you. But you should get it every now and then just to make sure things are working. I want the starting bid next. I want the winning bid and the ship. Now, another way to get contiguous or even non contiguous ones at a time are to hold down the control key. So I'm holding the control key down now. And I could get down now. I could do item cost here, but when I if I was to drop them in, then item cost would go in first. You know what? That's okay. Let's do that. I'm going to click this one, and then I'm going to drag them down here. And you'll see item cost came in here, and I really wanted it over here. I can move that field. I can just go like this, highlight it, and then bam, and now it's over here. And you'll get, get play around with the with the movement, you know, with dragging and dropping and all that. You know, get used to doing it, because you'll be doing it a lot. Uh, the listing fee. and the actual shipping and the overhead. I didn't miss anything. Yeah, I'm close. Yeah, overhead. Okay. Those are the fields I need to do this. And those last three are in order, so I don't have to worry about moving things around. So I've got all the fields. Now, right away, let's save this. Go up here to the top and save it. I think I saved this as... Q R Y auction. Q R Y auction. Now there's I could have saved it as Q R P auction. You'll see that a lot when I do that. Uh, when I have a query that is only used uh, as the source of a report, I may make a Q R P. But Q R Y is a more general, just it's a general select query. And it can still be used as a source for a report. So uh, if you see QRP on any of mine, you'll say, well, I just used QRY that one time. They kind of are in interchangeable. Okay, I, I wouldn't take off points on either, uh, unless, unless there was an absolute need to make one, one uh, QRY and the other one QRP. But we're going to call, call this one QRY. Before I do anything else, I'm going to really make sure that's what I did in the solution for this. I need to create QRY. Mm, 
yet in our white auction. And it's RPT auction for the report. I don't need to remember that. Okay. Now, the truth is, on your reports and your queries, you, they don't have to necessarily link to a table. Because uh, you might develop many queries off of the same table. Uh, what I do in that case is I usually would say auction dash, QRY auction dash, whatever report it's going to go to, or something like that, just so I can have some traceability that, you know, it came out of the auction uh, table and it's going to go to a certain report. But this one, we're only going to have one report and it's going to be on the auction, so we can use auction to be the handle for all our objects that are used on this. And again, I could have used RPT auction here if I wanted to. All right, so now I've got the query and it's named. Let's run it right now. And what you'll see is this is the data sheet that comes back from it. It's got all those fields. I just dropped it in, in the order. It also has all the records right now. Let's go back to design. Okay. The first thing I want to do is create these um, derived fields that are going to use these to create the field. All right. So um, now the interesting thing is I really didn't have to drop these in to create the derived fields. I could have just made the reference to these that are in this list and it will work just fine. But I wanted to put them in here just to show you what we're how we're going about doing this. So um, so to create a derived control uh, derived field in a query is almost it's exactly like building a derived control in a uh, form. Or you and by the way you can have derived controls and reports too, but we're going to just always use a derived field in a query to do this. Um, building the expression is exactly the same. Uh, with one little little twist on it. All right. Now first off, these expressions could get really big, so we might want to expand your field. Truthfully, they could get so big that they could go off the screen, and then it doesn't help you very much. So one of the things you can do to help you build, have more uh, room to visualize the query is to right-click on it and hit this thing that says, you've got two here. You've got one that says zoom, and that will basically zoom on it, and you can write the query in there. The other thing is to use this builder. Uh, and I like using the builder. I'm not going to show you a lot about the builder right now, but the builder can actually help you build your expressions. Well, I'll tell you what, I will do that. I will use it for this first one, okay? So right now, I want to use the builder to build the expressions. It knows right now that I'm coming from this thing called Query Auction, and right now it knows that these are the fields I have in here. So I'm going to expand this over so you can see more. Okay. Now, the first thing I need to do is basically name this field, name this derived field. Now this is one of the few times in the class where you won't have a naming convention. You can do what you want to. Be careful not to use a reserved word. Usually that's not a problem on this. But the reason that we're going to give it a, a, an English-like word here is because that's actually going to become the caption of the field, too. So we're doing, if I was to use a, uh, a naming convention to do this, you would get a really weird caption. So I just let you just use an English-like uh, phrase to give the name, the handle of the field here. So for the, this derived field, I want to do a derived field for the sale. So I type in sale, and then always colon, space, all right? That tells Access to name this derived field sale. Now, I could type in those, I, I could, well, I'm going to try it here. I'm going to start typing, and I, I, want, I want the auction, uh, the cur it's a currency field, Cur auction dash winning bid. And you can see, as soon as I started typing CUR, it came back with all a list of all the fields that are in here that start with CUR. And of course, there are a few of them. But winning bid is on here, and I can just double click on that now and it puts that in there. That was cool. That was easy, right? And plus, and I want to set shipping. Well, you know what? It's down here. I can just double click from in here, and now it's in there. 
There's my expression. Built as easy as that. Let's go back. Let's save it here. Let's run the query. And you can see now it's going to be all the way over there at the end. So I have to scroll over. And there it is. Oh, I'm sorry. So you can see it. Sale. And there it is. And what that did basically is it took um, this value here and added this value here and came up with this value. That's neat. Uh, let's go back and build the expense. Now, expense has a lot more fields in it. It's got four of them all together. All right. Now, if you do this and you have problems, I've already given you in the tutorial what the string should look like, what the expression should look like. You can always just copy and paste it in here if you want to. Again, be careful of carriage control line feeds, though. It, it may look like it's okay, but it's really got those in there, and then it won't work. All right. So I would, what I tend to do is I just type these out and then I'm fine with it. So again, what I want to do here, uh, I'm going to bring up my, my builder. And I want this to be expense, colon. And in my expenses, I have the item cost, the listing fee, the actual shipping, and the overhead. So the item cost is right here, plus, type it in a plus, and I usually put spaces around my operators, uh, set shipping, actually it already, already puts a space after, isn't that interesting, I didn't even realize that, for all these years, you know, after a while you start, you start thinking about things because it just becomes so automatic. Let's see, I said set shipping, listing fee, oh I'm sorry, that's not right, it's not set shipping, that was, uh, I'm looking at the last one, I wanted, I didn't cost listing fee, listing fee, plus uh, actual shipping, Sorry, I have to read off my notes as I'm doing this. And then overhead. And the overhead's probably down here a little bit. Yep, there it is. Okay. And I can say, okay. Oh, that, if you get this little thing that says expression at the front, get rid of it. That should not be there, and that will cause a problem. All right, this is what it ought to look read. Expense, and then those references to those fields all added together. Again, let's go look at that. And by the way, when I, I could go to, I could just go to the, hit the view and it would do it, or I could run the query. Either one will do the same thing. Okay, and there you go. There's the expenses, which is the overhead, and the shipping, and the listing fee, and the cost, all added together. All right, good. Now, I want the profit. And the profit is just this minus this. Couldn't I just say sale minus expense? Turns out, no. And here's why. On the drive control, you could have done that. Because the value already exists in the control. So that thing actually has something to uh, resolve. You know, I'm saying as I'm saying that, I don't think that's true. I think you actually have to have it even in drive control. Yes, that's true. In a drive control, we have to express the entire expression. Okay. And here's why, both in drive control and a query, and, uh, or I should say drive field and a query, it's the same situation. These fields don't exist, really. All right, they're being derived. So they would have to be derived first before this, before this one I'm about to build is, can be derived. The query, when it runs, tries to do them all at once. So because these two don't really exist, you'll get an error message on the profit. It just won't be able to do it. Uh, it's not like when you program where you would say, oh, I can have a variable called sale and I'll set it, and I'll have a variable called expense and I'll set it, and then I'll have this other variable called profit that will equal to the sales variable minus the expenses variable. When you do it that way in programming, this is set first, this is set second, and that would be set third. 
These are all being said at the same time. And because those, these two don't exist, the third one can't be set because it's a function of those two. So we need to actually just say this whole expression again in parentheses minus this whole expression again in parentheses. I know it's a little bit of typing, but it's not that bad, and, you, and Axis helps you build it, so it doesn't take too much time. So I'm going to call this one profit. And then again, parentheses to, now I'm going to build the, the sales part of this. So I've got my winning bid plus my set shipping. Okay. And I'm going to subtract from it the expense part of it. And so I've got my um, the uh, auction item cost. Plus the listing fee, plus the actual shipping, plus the overhead. Somebody wants to ask me, since those three are four are together, how can't you just do your uh, uh, hold on your shift key and bring them all in? Yeah, I don't think that would work. I don't know. Oh, let's try. It. Nope, won't do it. It only wants to do one at a time because it's going to have to have these pluses in between in between each of those anyway. So I've got my sale information and my expense information grouped together. And I'm going to take sales minus the expenses and I'm going to my profit. So now I've got that one again. See, it's really small here. I could try to expand it out, but it would be huge. It would take up most of this. So, uh, And again, you don't really need to. I mean, unless you really want to see it, that's fine. But you don't really need to. Let's save it again. We're running again so you can see the results of that. It's so not at the very end here. I've got, my, I've got a profit. And you can see the ones that are negative come up as a parenthesis. In other words, these are ones that I lost money on. Now, having done all that, and I'm going to move to the next page. I'm on step four in the, in the thing now. Well, we look at the data sheet, so we see everything. So now I'm on step five. And when I look in here, one of the things you're going to notice is that I've got somewhere... Um, you know, especially on these where it looks like I lost. The reason I did is because there was no winner. And there were no winning bids. Nobody bid on it. So where do I have my winning uh, the bids? Did I not put that in here? Oh, yeah. No, I got the winning bid in here. I have to go back up. I have to go get my, my uh, list again one more time. I never put the auction bids in here. I'm sorry about that. The number of bids that we needed. Let's go back and add that field. All right. So, wait, how did I miss that? Let me go back here. And that's one of the good things about queries. I mean, you kind of build them in, in pieces until you finally get what you want. See, I should have had a field called bids. Yeah, the number of bids, right? Yeah, it's this integer field right here. Right here. Okay. I should have had that. And I wanted to put that after the record identifier. So I'm doing is highlighting that, dragging it down, and then where I want it to be, I'm going to just drop it there and it should put it there and move everything else over and it did. Okay. So that's right. Oh, I see what I did wrong. I put the starting bid here instead of bid. So I got a field in here I really don't want. No problem. Just highlight it and hit delete. Okay, so now we got this right. Bids, and then when bid, yeah, that's the order I want to make. Let's go back and look at that. So yeah, see, now you see I've got the bids here. I don't have uh, um, the starting bid. I really don't care about what it started at. You know, I just care about what it finished at. So so I got the number of bids here, but you can see some of these. Zero bids. Zero bids. Nobody bid on that. All right. So technically I didn't make a profit. I really didn't have a the only loss I really had was uh, the loss of uh, of putting it up for auction, you know, the the cost that go along with that. So I did really technically have a loss. But let's say this report I want to do is just about those items that I sold. 
All right, I don't want to show the items I didn't sell. How do I handle that? Again, once in a while, I'll save your query. I'm saving it right now. I'm going to go up here, but again, the design view. And on this one, that says bids. We have this little line here that says criteria. Make the criteria greater than zero. In other words, I only want to bring back the records where the criteria is equal to zero. I'm sorry, I have to go back and forth between two computers here to see what I'm doing. All right. All right. All I have to do is that. Now, remember, we had 207 records before. I'm going to save this and run it. And let's see how many we get now. 201. That means I had six auctions in there where nothing sold. So now I'm limiting not only the number of fields that are in here, but also the number of records that are in here. All right. Now, one of the other things I like to do is I like to have it when they have, uh, I like to see, at least at this time, I like to see things sorted um, first by when it closed and then by the eBay item number because I may have several items close on the same day. All right. I want the close, though, to be in descending order. In other words, I want to see the most recent close first. But then within each one of those, I want to see the eBay item number in ascending order, in alphabetical order. Now, yeah, I know this is a number. It looks like a number to you, okay? But it really isn't stored as a number. It's stored as text. It's just an alphanumeric. Someday, eBay could change their, their uh, uh, format to have uh, alphabet characters in there, and I want to be able to accommodate that. So I just made that text to begin with, because number one, I'm never going to do a mathematical operation on the eBay number. It's just a code. So when things are usually a code and always going to be a code, I'll leave that as a text field. The reason I'm telling you this is I noticed on some of your homeworks, some of you use social security number as a field in your uh, customer table. I'm, uh, one of the things that I ask you to do is add extra fields to that and you use social security number, but you made it an integer. Yeah, it's true that social security numbers are only numbers now, but they may not always be, and they're never something that you're going to do a mathematical operation on. So you probably really want that to be in a text, not an integer field. I didn't take off any points if you've done that, you know. There are sometimes it's questionable about whether you should use text or or uh, or number if uh, on the thing. Uh, and usually I, I don't. Again, I don't take off. Maybe we talk about years, for instance. If I ask you for a year and not none of the rest of the date, some of you just been using a four-digit integer, in that and and then limiting it between a certain range, and that works, especially if you think you may want to do a uh, calculation on it. But then it's not really a date field either, okay? So you can't do a date operation on it. So you have to consider whatever you want to maybe use that field for and then put it in a format that makes sense for it. If I had set this up as text and then later on I decide, no, it really needs to be a number, guess what? All I have to do is change the field to number field. It will automatically convert it to a number. So uh, from a visual perspective, it looks like a number no matter what. But anyway, right now I want to write, you have this query uh, sort first in descending order the um, close date and then in ascending order the eBay item number. I go back to my design view and you'll see on here there's a thing called sort. Simple as this. I'm going to sort this in descending order and I'm going to sort this one in ascending order. Save it, run it, and you'll see things are different now. So the most recent one is up here now and here's one where I've got multiple, day, uh, multiple items on the same date, and you'll see that they are uh, listed in ascending order by the eBay item number. So pretty cool, really quick to do that. I'm going to save the query. Now, let's start pruning it down a little bit, okay? Again, just because I use these fields in the derived, uh, derived field, uh, as part of the expression in the derived field, doesn't mean I have to have them here. I could turn these off. 
Now, right now, truthfully, what I could do is I could just go in here and remove them. I could just go in here and say that I'll, I'll do the auction overhead. Just hit delete on that, okay? It's still being referenced there because it's still part of this query. It's still part of the source. So it's still referenced. If I run this right now, you would see that that value, those values, those drive values haven't changed, but that field is not there anymore. Another way to just get rid of it right now is to hit this thing that says show and unshow it. Well, you might, and I'm going to tell you why this is kind of handy. Now, on these fields where I don't have a criteria set, Basically, when I save the query, if I was to save the query right now, close it down, and then reopen it again in the design view, you'll see those disappear. All right? But watch what happens here on this one. It's called bids. Again, I don't, I don't want to show the records that didn't have a bid, <clears throat> but I also don't want to show how many bids I had either. I mean, I just want this to be a report about the auctions that had a close, basically, where I sold the thing. I don't even care how many bids I had. I'm just worried. About, I just want to know how much the last bid basically brought in. So I still want to use this criteria on this field, but I don't want to show that field. All I have to do is turn it off like that. Now, when I do that, let's close this one down. All right, again, and now open it up again. And what you'll see is that field is still there, but it's as greater than zero and it's not checked. And by the way, it moves it all the way to the end. I think it just does that so you can conveniently see the ones that are actually going to come up together. This is what I want. I want this report to have these seven fields here, all right? Three of them which are derived from me, all right? And you can see, too, I've got the item type here, and this will become a very important field when we do the report that's going to be based on this query. But so now I can go in here and I can run this thing. And that's a nice report all by itself. I mean, truthfully, sometimes this is all I do, is I write a query, I get it to like something like this. Uh, my boss would look at this and say, hey, that's really neat. Tell me what the total is on these. Access has something in it that none of the other database systems that I've ever come across has. And that is a way to actually sum a set of records that appear in a, in a data sheet. Some uh, certain fields in a, a data sheet, basically. Or, you know, not just some, you can take an average, you can take the standard deviation. There's a lot of different math ma mathematical operations. By the way, I should have said that up front. When I say to aggregate your records, it doesn't just mean sum them up. It can mean take the average. It means that you're going to do a mathematical operation on part of, on mul multiple records. Okay, not just one record. So, I'm going to go up here to the top. Let's see, i got to remember how to do this now. Go to the top here. You see this thing that says totals? Click on that. And you'll see it put a bar down here called totals. Go over, let's say, to sale. Click on that. And you'll see this drop down here. And pick sum. Do the same thing on expense. Do the same thing on... Uh, profit. So there's my grand totals for the sales, the expense, and the profits. Okay. Another thing you can do here, and right now I could do this on any field because all these these two are these are actually these are all required fields here. You had to have a category too. Um, so yeah, I should show that that was actually a a drop down that is also is not null. So I had to pick a, a category right away when I established a record. But on any of these, because they're required, that means they all have values. I could go on, I mean, let's, let's do it on item. I'm going to go down on here, and I'm going to do just count. It's just, it, it knows it's not a number field, so I don't get the ability to sum it up. Same here. Again, I made that a text field, so it knows I, can, I can't sum it up. But what I can do is I could put a count. In other words, the number of records that are up there. And it's not counting this one to add a record, by the way. It's kind of interesting that on select queries, You'll also get the scene to be able to add a record. I recommend never doing that, okay? Unless you have all, you know you have all the required fields, you know. All you're going to be able to do is put these ones in here. All, all the other fields that were in that table are still going to be blank, and these will come zero anyway, okay? So I really wish they, there was a way to not have that turned on. 
I would never do it from here. I would always just go back to the form or the data sheet, or the data sheet on the uh, subject table in order to actually manage, put new data into here. But anyway, that's a nice little thing. And I'll tell you the truth, most of my bosses would have been happy with this. You know, hey, that's exactly what I want, you know. And I could always change colors up here and all that if I want to, but you, but you guys know how to do all that. You go come up here and I can, you know, put new colors in here and stuff like that. And bam. So, did you notice how that did it on alternating fields? You can make the, uh, the other fields another one. Uh, let's see if I can remember how to do that. Yeah, see this one, it says alternate background color. I could have made it say, oh, I don't know, green, light green like that. And now it changed to light green. Isn't that neat? I don't even think down here on the totals. Let me see, can I do it on the totals? No, it doesn't let me do it there. But I, oh, I changed the font. That's interesting, but I can't change the background on it. That's strange. Anyway, again, I would do, could, could do this, and I could then go out and just do a print. Well, actually, this is going to actually print it. Let's go over here and do a, a print preview. There it is. That's what we print out. But you can see that doesn't look terrific. I mean, it's kind of... It's running over on other pages and all that. I really want to make this thing look nice. And not only that, I want to be a little bit more sophisticated. I want to group based on the item type, the category item type. I want to have subsets of records that I could have a, uh, a subtotal for the sales, the expenses, and the profits. And then an overall for all of them together, just like I have down here. And to do that, what we do is we create a report. So I'm going to move to that part of the of the tutorial now. We'll use this query that I had to create a report. Uh, so I am now in T zero four zero one part B. And I'm going to do step one for you. All right. So let's close down that query. You want to save? Sure. Why not? That's kind of nice because then if I ever open it up again, it's all there again. Even the totals are still there. But that is not going to be available to the report, those totals at the bottom. We're going to have to recreate those in the report. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a heads up right now. <sighs> Reports are the least constrained objects in Access. And you may notice there is no report object that I give you. you. This is one that we actually have to create from scratch, just like the query. We had to create that from scratch. All right, There is no uh, baseline object library uh, object for doing a report or a query. And the reason for that is Access has actually done a very good job of helping you build a report that I couldn't do it any better. All right. Now I will tell you, in the early days of Access, reports were the hardest thing to do. They were also the most flexible thing to do, and they still are the most flexible thing to do in, in Access. Believe it or not, when Access first came out, there was a 150-page manual just for doing a report object. There was so many. There are so many things to do with it, but it also required you to do all the work. In adding wizards, and I told you in, in one of my emails, we won't use wizards very often, but reports are almost, in, uh, not almost entirely, but, uh, but fairly well designed using wizards that are built into Access. And so what I've decided to do in this class is just to utilize those as much as possible. The interesting thing about it is you won't even know you're using the wizards most of the time. They just kind of happen. You'll think it was part of the regular functionality, but it's not. And almost everything we're doing, there's a harder way to do it. But <laughs> why teach you the harder way and use the easy way? So that's what I'm going to do here. The first thing we want to do, you do have to have the... Now, we want to base this report on a query. I'm going to tell you right up front, you don't have to. All right, you can have the report based on the table, directly on the table. 
But then anything that we did in the query, that we just did in the query, is going to be lost. Now, one of the unfortunate things in building this, Microsoft actually undid some of the things that you do in a query. It's an, I don't know why they did that. So even though we've got this query and we're going to utilize it, there are some things that we did over there that we're going to have to do again in the report. Okay, But not all of it. And that's why I still want to use a query because a lot of the hard things we just did, like doing the derived fields, are going to be in the report. Now again, everything I did here in this query, believe it or not, I, don't, I could do just in the report attached to TDL auction. And I'm actually going to give you an assignment where I don't ask you to do a query, but just put it on the table and try to produce the things. Okay? But right now, let's do it on a query. I really want to show you how to do it on a query. Because I'll tell you, I almost always, when I create a report, build it on a query rather than directly on the table. So we have so kind of look at this as being a middleman, <laughs> if you will, a middle person in the process that you have you build your table, your subject table. You build a query to limit the, the fields and the records from that table, and then you build a report that's on top of the query. So have the query highlight, because this is one now where it's going to actually try to generate the report for, from you, and it needs to know what it's using as its source. So I've highlighted query uh, uh, QR, QRY auction. I go up and do a create, and then hit this one that says report. And bam, there it is. There's the report for that query. Looks a lot like what we just had, right? If I scroll through it, you see a lot of good stuff. But notice, down here where you had the totals, oh, the only one it gave you is the count. And truthfully, we didn't have to do a total, so we would have done that anyway. But it didn't give me the other ones. But I'm going to show you how to make that happen. All right? First, though, let's look at this. This comes up in default in... Um, what was, what's called portrait mode. In other words, if I was to print it out right now, you see the dot, dot, dots. That shows you basically what could get on one page, and this would spill over to the next. And we kind of saw that when we printed out the query before. Those spilled out onto the next. And that's really crappy. We don't want that, something like that. We want to make it look really nice, okay? And this is where you will spend a lot of time is making things fit and making things look good. But first, let's get it into what I call the working mode. Let's make sure it brings back the data and, and, and has things uh, formatted pretty much, or I should say grouped the way we want it to before we actually do the format. So before I do anything else, let me name this. So I'm going to go up here and save it. And it comes up QROI auction because I based it on that query. Change it to RPT auction. So just change the prefix to little r, lowercase rpt. And now I've got my report. Okay, and that's actually in here. If I close it down now, I've got that and I double click on it, it brings it up. Now right now, you can see that looks different than what I just had before. This is what's called the report view. I mean, I can't do any design here. And it's interesting, people ask me this all the time. I can't change this data. No, you can't. All right, this is a report. A report is a snapshot. Why Microsoft lets you actually cursor into these things? I think they just do it because people may want to talk to this and say, well, right here they did this, you know, and, you know, but you can't actually change anything on, on this part, okay? This is what's called report view. And you can see it up here in the views. It's called report view, all right? We're used to working down here in Design View when we did forums. This is what this actually looks like in Design View. But there's another view. And for reports, I use it all the time. It's called the Layout View. Now, when we did Subject Forms, I'm going to, have to open up the Subject Form for uh, Auction. I'm going to open up in Design View. Believe it or not, if I go over here and look at its views, well, it doesn't show that here. Oh, I know why. I turned it off. I turned it off, okay? Uh, there is actually a layoff view, a, a layout view for uh, for forms. In fact, I'm not going to show you. Don't use it, okay? I turned it off in the baseline object library because you should never use it. In forms, it just causes headaches. I think I only use it w once in a great, great while. I may use a lookup view on a form 
But if I was making my form in data sheet as a data sheet, I might use it there. But we don't. We do a single record form all the time. So just use uh, Design View when you do that. But I just want to let you know, if you ever use Raw Access, you'll see that subject forms also have a layout view. And it is a nightmare to work with. Okay, so just don't use it. But on reports, it's invaluable. You will use layout a lot. In fact, you will rarely ever go to Design View. I'll do it maybe once just to show you that you can. But almost everything we're going to do, we're going to do right here. Okay, so I'm in Layout View right now for that um, for that report. And the first thing I want to do is, you know, I know I'm going to have a lot going across. So rather than doing this in portrait mode, I want to do it in landscape mode. And the way to do that, you see up here where you have report layout tools that are highlighted right now, go to page setup. And one of the options in here is landscape. And now that just turns it landscape. And look, I almost have it all in here. All right. So now I can jockey things around so I can get it all in here. All right. So one of the things I'm going to do first off is look at eBay number. It gave me this huge thing for something that isn't very big. Just go out and click one of these and bring it over. Now, notice that I got the caption at the top that says eBay number. I want that all to be in there. So I'm going to let that be my limiter basically for the size of this. I'm just going to drag one of those over and let it go and the whole thing did. Now, Here's the thing, whatever I do on one of these, it's going to happen on all of them because I'm really talking about the format for a record that's coming back or what they call a tuple that's being brought back to view in the report. So moving that one over, move them all over. I can't move them individually, by the way. Okay. Now here, I can. I can move that individually, but you know what? It's the header for the column. So whatever I do to the size of that is going to happen to the whole column. You really have a couple things going on here. This is the header for the report. This is the header for the what's called the page. And then this is the actual detail section that we have. And we go down here and we have a footer. And that's the footer for the report. There is no footer for the page on this. If I go back to design view right now, I'm going to do this just so I can show you the different parts. You'll see right now, we, we're used to seeing the detail and on the forms, we're used to seeing detail in the form header and maybe a form footer. Okay, the three of them. We only get three there. But here, we're going to have multiple headers and multiple footers. And there's going to be a report and there'll be a page. And then there could be a group. And then there could be a subgroup. And there could be another subgroup. You can have as many. Uh, um, group headers as you want. And the same thing, you'll have group footers and page footers and report footers. And you'll have different activities that you can do in each one of those, okay? Uh, a report header appears only once at the on the very first page of, of the report at the top. A report footer only appears once. And that's at, on the last page of the report at the bottom. The report header is at the top of every page of the report and report footer is at the bottom of every page of the report. And then later on, again, I'll show you this when we actually put a group header in here, group header and footer here. A group header will be at the top of the group of records that it's related to and the group footer will be at the bottom of that group of records. And then the details will be your grouping of records, basically, uh, or tuples. I keep calling it records because, you know, that's what... Uh, I should call it rows because that's what Microsoft calls it. But in database lingo, it's really called tuples. A tuple is basically a set of fields that tell you information. And those fields can come from one table or they can come from many tables. But together, they, they give you a view of your data. All right? And, and it's a non-normalized view of normalized data. I know that doesn't make any sense to you now. When we do... Um, um, multi-subject relationships. You'll, we'll talk about data normalization and how to give unnormalized views of our, of our data. Because some people want to see things in an norm, unnormalized manner, even though our database wants to have everything normalized, obviously. And again, if that didn't make any sense to you, don't worry about it. I am going to go back to layout view. 
Okay, so now I'm in layout view again. And even some of these other fields like sports cards, because I'll tell you something, I know right now that what I'm going to end up doing is this one that says sports cards is going to be up here all by itself as a group header, sports cards, and then I'm going to, so this is actually going to go away. So I'm not going to worry about it too much right now. In fact, I'm going to just leave that just as it is. Okay, that looks okay the way it is. That little bit of space at the other end isn't going to matter very much. Now, I do want to give you a little heads up. Some of the examples I have, when you go to do a print of them, you, it may say that it's overrunning the margin. And that tends to only happen when we work at Wichita State. I've noticed when I do it on my stuff and other people do it at home, it doesn't happen. Wichita State, for some reason, set the margin on its printers to be a little bit odd. And because of that, it has nothing to do with access. It has to do with the printer. And the, and the access goes out and says, this is going to overrun the margin. Okay, You could try to narrow it down even further than this dot, dot, dot line to keep that from happening if you're using printers at the school. Okay, But uh, if you're doing printers at home and all that, no, I've never had anybody tell me they've had that issue where if they had things underneath the dot, 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 that they still got an error, a mess. It's not a, really even an error message. It's a warning, just saying that if you continue to print, you're going to have things that overrun the margin. All right, It's just something that happens at Wichita State, and I've never seen it happen anywhere else. So uh, just be aware of that. If you are try, ever try to print anything out at Wichita State, uh, a report out at Wichita State, you're going to have that problem. Okay, so now let's go in, and what, I'm, what I want to do next is um, I want to group and sort. Okay. Now, you can see down here where it says Add Group and Add Sort. If you are not seeing that right now, um, up here in Design tab, see if I do that right now, if I unclick that, it went away. You want that on. Go to Design tab and do Group, or, group and Sort and bring this up. This is actually going to launch a wizard that's going to help us do the grouping and sorting on here. Now, we built this query with the ability to sort on the close and the item number, right? The close was supposed to be descending and the eBay item number was supposed to be ascending. That's not happening here. And this is a big mistake that Microsoft made. They undo the sorting here and I don't, of, of the query. So we have to do it again, unfortunately. So sometimes I'll tell people, don't if you're just building a query to build a report, don't worry about group about sorting it over in the query. You know, just leave it as it is because you're going to have to sort it here anyway. But I wanted to do it there to show you that if, if all you were going to do is build the query and, and print that off, you could do it. And you could do it in the query. So it's still there in the query, but it's not being activated anymore. And I don't know why Microsoft did that. I would have had it come back sorted and just automatically built in here the sort that, that would go along with it. Maybe they'll fix that someday. I've actually... I've sent Microsoft a whole list of things I thought they could have done better, and they actually sent me a thank you, but I've never done any of them. So, anyway, <laughs> that's life. But anyway, um, we're going to have to resort these. But the other thing we want to do is we want to group the records based on the type that they are. So sports cards would all go together, and sports would all go together, and war memorabilia would go together and Christmas stuff would go together and all that. You know, we'd see different categories in there with their groupings of records. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the group. So I click this thing that says Add Group, and you'll see right now, by the way, I mean, all the other parts of the query work. We got the derived field value, right? And we, all, and we got a limited number of, we got the limited number of fields, and we also have the limited number of records. We know there's only 201 records in here, too. So all the rest of that query that it, this is bound to is working. The only thing that isn't is the sort right now. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to pick... Now, I know that's hard to see. And there, unfortunately, there's no way to expand this. So you have to click over if you, if you need to see more and just try to find it. But it's this one that says auction star item type. That's our foreign key field, right? This is why category relationships are so important to us as industrial engineers. 
because we categorize data to death, all right? And when we report on it, we want to report on it based on the categories. So most of the time, in fact, I, I'll tell you right now, I can't think of a time I've ever done any other kind of grouping other than grouping on the um, on, a, on foreign key fields. So I'm going to click that one and look what it did. It took the field that said item type on here and it put it over here. It took it out, you know, it took out repeating that underneath and it created this header on top that basically just has that value. If I, I'm going to save it right now just so I don't lose it, but I'm going to go out here to design view and you're going to see now there's a new header out here that says header for that foreign key. And if I wanted to, I could actually create a, a footer for it, too. And there is a way to do that. Let me go back and I'll show you that. I could go back. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go back to layout view. Can't have a footer until there's something to put into it. That's why. All right. So Microsoft's thinking ahead. That's a good, good thing to do. Uh, so I've got this right now. And I'm happy with that. Um, now I want to set a group. I want to set the group footer. I want to put tallies for the group. And I'm going to do it in the footer. I could do it in the header. Did I do it in the header or in the footer? I think I did it in the header or there. I'm going to do it in the footer on this one. Just so you can see how to do it. Alright? Because I can't do it in both. Alright? In the tutorial video, I do it in the header. I put the, the subtotals right next to this. I'm going to put them in the footer of, of the group. So I'm going to go out here and I'm going to do a... Um, did I sort first before I did this? I think I did. That group? No, no, I didn't sort yet. You can sort group. Yeah, that's fine. Let's just do, do this right now. So I'm going to add a group. Uh, I, I already added the group. Now, all I have to do is go on any one of these group titles, okay? So I go in and I uh, use, I'll, I'll just put it on book, all right? Because whatever I do for one will happen for all of them. And I could do, group on, Group on more. That's right. Okay, more. So for this group, it's called lawn star item uh, I mean, lawn auction star item type dash record identifier. Okay, for that foreign key field, what I want to do, I've, I've already grouped on it, and now I want to tally up. Um, the number of records that I have in each of the group, I want the total sales, the total expenses, and the total profits, and I want that to appear as if it's a line at the bottom of that. Okay. Again, on the tutorial, I have them at the top, I think. But I'm going to do. Them, I want to show you how to actually have the footer generated here. So we're going to do that instead. So. The first thing I want to do is I want to go, uh, and I'm going to do it on auction close. I can do it on any one of these fields, but I'm going to do it on auction close where I actually have uh, the count of the number of the records. So it just happens to be already picked here, auction close, and you'll see it says total. If I click on that, you'll see auction close count, and it's going to show grand total. That's happening at the bottom. I want to show it as a subtotal in the group's footer. And you see it just put three there. Now I know that's kind of chopping it off a little bit. So one of the things you can do is highlight it and drag it a bit so that it shows it a little bit better. That's fine. Okay. So that, you see here, it's showing me that how many records I have in each one of these groupings now. And this is the nice thing about the layout view. I can see the, the report as I'm building it. How it's actually going to look. All right. Now I want to do a sum of the sales. So I'm going to go over here again and hit more again. All right. And now I'm going to hit that drop down again that says with. But now I'm going to change it to 
sale. And it says sum, so that's good. I could have taken an average or what, find the maximum or whatever else, you know. But I want to show it as uh, in the group footer again. So show group footer, and it'll do that. All right, let's do the exact same thing for expense. So I'm going to go back and hit more again. And this is, I know this gets to be kind of uh, annoying. you got to do it over and over and over. But it, it, you know, usually only have too many fields, and you're not going to do this a lot. So, and it helps. I almost wish it had stayed open so we could do multiple things at the same time. But it wants to just do one operation at a time. So we're going to go out and use the expense now. And again, we're going to sum up and put it in the group footer. And then we're going to do... profit, sum it up, put it in the group footer. Okay, so we've got uh, now it, it added them all up. But you can see right away, we got an issue here that these are all in dollars and these are just coming up numbers. I'm just going to go hi highlight these and I'm holding down my control key now so I can select each all of them together so I can do this all at once. And I could go up here to format and hit dollar and there it is. How about that? And it changed it on all of them, just like the other ones did. Okay? Now, that's great. I got a subtotal in each one of these, but if I go to all the way down to the bottom, you'll see this is this one you're seeing here is the subtotal for the last one, the Christmas one. I don't have an overall total. I do have an overall count. That was kind of built for me to begin with. Again, I'm gonna expand this down a little bit so you can see it better. Okay, and this is in the the report footer. These are in the group footers. Okay. I want to actually have an overall total here too. So I could go back again and I believe I could do this from anywhere, truthfully. Yeah, but let's do it. Let's do it where we were again. Let's hit that more again. And hit the width, and it's going to get harder to see things now, okay? Is it with totals? Yeah, with totals. And what I want to do is on sale, I want to show the grand total, too. And now I know it took you back to the top. I hated that it does that, but let's go back down to the bottom, and you'll see it's got the grand total now. Let's do more again. And with totals, and I want to have the expense, and I'm going to show the grand total, and I'll do it right away again for I know it's down there. I'm going to go again, and I'm going to do it for profit. I'm going to show the grand total. Okay, and now I go down to the bottom, and there they are. And again, I want that to be dollars. So, I'm going to highlight this one, and this one, and this one, and I will make it dollars. You know what I just noticed? These aren't dollars. I wonder why those didn't change dollars when the rest of them did. I wonder if, that's in, if that was generated to the page footer by accident. You know what? None of these are. Why do how come that got undone? Huh. For some reason, that got undone. You know, usually I do the grand totals first, and then I do the groups. I did these things the other way. I did it the other way around, and for some reason, it reset that. Be careful of that. Huh. I've never seen that before. But anyway, now everything looks good. Everything's got a dollar symbol on it. It looks really good. All right? So this report is pretty much what I want to turn in. Um, but I still got the problem that it undid my sorts. So let's fix that. I want to go in and I want to do an add a sort, and on close, I want the sort to be, it says oldest to newest, I want it to be newest to oldest. I want the most recent one to come up first in that set, and then I want to add another sort. A secondary sort where I sort on the eBay item 
and I and it, it's, this is where instead of saying ascending, it says A on top. That's fine. You know, otherwise it says Z on top. A on top, and that that would put it basically puts it in in uh, ascending order. So now I got my books are come up first, and the reason it comes up first is it's actually the first one that's in the database. Okay. These are not sorted, even though they look sorted. If I go all the way to the bottom, you're going to see I've got Christmas there, okay? Can I sort those? It turns out you can't. In a single, from a query that's on a single table, on a subject table, you can't sort the um, foreign key field. Because remember, it's really holding primary key values. It's not really holding these, all right? When we get to lesson six, I'm going to show you how to fix this so we can have these sorted too. But for now, it's enough. I just want you to really learn how to build a report. Get used to doing this part of it. And then I'll show you how to really make it accurate with, uh, with what we call joins on the query. All right? So that's the functional part of this. And so far, it's pretty good. Um, but I want to do some other stuff. I mean, of course, I want to work on the format quite a bit here. Uh, in fact, let's do that first. I'm going to do some formatting here. Start making things look a lot better. And then, um, no, no, no. I'll do the conditional formats first, okay? We'll do conditional formats first. So as you remember, on my profit, I had colors to indicate whether I had made a profit or I had lost or it was neutral, all right? I'm going to start with this footer, okay? I'm going to start there. Now, I'm not going to worry about sales and expenses because these are always positive and, you know, these are always out. These are always income and these are always outgo. That's the way to look at it, all right? So it's just the profit that I want to actually have some kind of conditional format to change the look of this as, as it happens, all right? So... I could write three rules, three conditional format rules that bring back green, yellow, and red, all right? But you know what? Most of these will usually be profitable. They usually will be green. So since it's going to be one of those three conditions and only one of those three conditions, because I'm not showing auctions that didn't have, uh, that were nothing sold, right? I'm always either going to have pro I'm make money or, or not make money or break even. Okay, I'm always going to have one of those three conditions. I really only need to have two rules because I get a default condition, right? So I'm going to make the default condition that I was profitable because usually I am. So all I have to do is highlight that field, go up to the shape fill, and pick one of the greens. So I'm going to pick like a I'm going to pick like a this dark green. And I'm going to put a white back, uh, a white alphanumeric, uh, I'm sorry, a white font on it. And I'm going to make it bold, all right? Now, if I go down and look here, all those tallies, those, all those subtotals are green, okay? And I'll tell you, I don't think I put data in here so you can have anything else except green. Uh, I'll tell you, what, maybe we could change one so I could do Well, let's try it. I should have, because I really should test it. I'll tell you what, let's go back and change this bicentennial license plate to be a losing option, just for, for the sake of it. Um, I'm going to save the report, close it down, go back to auction, find the one about the bicentennial plate. By the way, you can do, data sheets have a, a lot of similar functionality to. Um, uh, spreadsheet. So I could do a search in here. Um, find, basically. Find Bison Ken. I'm not going to just do a, any part of the field. There it is. Okay. I'm going to make this so that it, I took a loss on it. So what did I put it up for auction? Let's see. What did I pay for it to begin with? Uh, let's see, I get the listing fee, the starting bid, the close, the winning bid, the overhead. Where's the starting, how much I paid for it? I ain't no price. 
Right? I'm not all the way over here. Oh, I'm not all the way over. I'm sorry about that. Okay, here it is. Acquisition costs. There it is. Um, and then I fell off the thing and doing it. Let's go find it again. All right, there it is. All right. Who am I that record? There we go. We're on that record now. I'm going to say my acquisition cost on that was $10. So I know that I'm taking a loss on it now. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go back and open up the report. See, this would be normal view now. And you see how this one, it's this bicentennial license plate, is coming up in negative, but yet I got a green background. So let's change that so it would come up red uh, on the conditional. And again, layout view. Highlight that again. Okay, highlight that footer. Sell again. And you, will, and you see when you pick it there, it picks it on all the other ones automatically. And I'm going to go up to format. And I'm going to do a conditional format there. I'm going to add a rule. And I'm going to say, if the field value is less than 0, in other words, I took a loss on it, make the background green, uh, red, make the font bold, and make it white. White sits by default. That's why I just had to click on that. All right. Now, you still got this little thing for enable and disable. You see, it's not enabled at all. It should never be on a report, so you don't have to worry about that there. Excuse me. Again, what you're trying to do is is uh, set based on an expression in that field, and so we're looking at what was in that field. All right, so there we go. You apply it. You say, okay, and there, you see now that's red. Let's take care of the zero condition. I know I don't have one in here that says zero, but let's do it anyway. We'll go to conditional format and another rule where we say it equals to zero. And then let's make the back of that a bright yellow. Okay. And I'm not going to make it, uh, the, the font white because it's it wouldn't be it wouldn't show up on the yellow, but I am going to make it bold there. Okay. So those are my conditions now. The default condition is that it's green, and so I don't have to take care of that here. And then the neutral condition, I, in other words, I, I broke even, is yellow. And then this is my for a loss condition. I, I lost money on the auction. Gain, broke even, loss. Okay. Again, I could have put one for greater than zero and made this green. It would work just as well. Okay. If you want to do that, feel free. But again, most of mine are going to be profitable. So it's just as easy to just say the default is green and these are the exceptions to that default. Okay, So that's done. But I want to do the same thing on individual auctions too. So again, I just have to select one of them. And so I select the profit for this first record and all those records are picked. But you'll notice the footer one isn't. Okay, I'm just working on the record calculation now. Go up to conditional and again, same thing. I usually have a profit so I'm going to go in and I'm going to drop in green. But instead of using that dark green now, I'm going to use a lighter shade. Because uh, I, I want it to look different than, than the totals. And this, these are kind of things you'll want to think about when you do it. You will spend more time working on the visualization for forms and reports than anything else. And reports especially, you want to make them look really good. All right. I have known people who have made their career out of making reports because they make them look so nice and so readable. And people can look at them and get the story that it's trying to tell right away just by things like how things are placed on it, uh, the color combinations, blah, 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 things like that. So anyway, I've got all this neat stuff in here now. And I want to put a conditional format on those record profits. And uh, the profits for the for the tuple, I should say. And now I get a new rule, and I'm going to build the one for a loss first, just like we did before. It doesn't have to be. I could do I could do the other one first. Um, people have asked me, what if I have multiple rules that could fire? Whichever one fires first is the one that it gets. Okay. It, it, after it fires the first rule that is successful, it stops. Okay. So. Make sure you hit, if, the, if there is order dependency of your rules, make sure you get the right order you want. This one, there is not going to be an order dependency because 
it's basically a Venn diagram where none of the circles overlap, okay, but it's yet a complete diagram, okay. So let's, uh, let's say it's, it's uh, less than zero, and I'm going to put a red background, a light red background in it. I took it out at this level, so I'm going to do that one at the same level. And on this one, I'm going to go and make it white. I'm going to leave it uh, black, and I'm not making these bold either. So that's good. And I'm going to do another rule right away, another new rule. And I'm going to make it equal to zero. And I know, even though that's a currency field, I don't have to put dollar zero in here. It knows that the, it's actually a number field that's used in a currency format. That's what the currency field does. And I'm going to put a pale yellow. Now, pale yellow is not in this list. So, again, to do that, I could hit more colors. And I could make, try to make one pale yellow, but there's a bunch of custom colors, standard colors back here. And this one's the pale yellow that I use a lot. And now I'm going to say OK. So I'm, you could hit apply, but all that did is just change it in the background. Now, if you hit OK, it applies right away. But you see, this one had, we broke even on. It's yellow. Uh, this one was a loss. It's red. This one's green. Kind of nice. Looking good. In fact, if I go out there and I look at the, uh, the real report right now, this is what it looks like. Not bad, huh? And I get down here to the bottom and I got this. You know, maybe I should do the, have a conditional format on this one, too, don't you think? I think I should. I'm going to go back and do it on the, uh, the, all, the grand total that's in the uh, report footer. So I'm going to go back to layout view. And I'm going to highlight that. And I'm going to do the same kind of thing I did before. Um, format, conditional format. Uh, oh, is it usually green? Oh, I, I would say it's probably always green. <laughs> in fact, if the most of these are, in fact, I really don't need a conditional format on this. I know it's going to be green all the time. I can just make it a dark green and go. Uh, so let's do that. I'm going to get dark green and bold and white. And you know, one of the other things I'm going to do is on this whole record, I'm going to make the font bigger. So, oops, don't want to do that. That was a mistake. I didn't do it. I'm going to control Z just in case I messed something up there. I mean, no, it's good. Okay. I wanted to select the whole record. There. Go off of it somewhere and select the whole thing. And then I think I can. No, I can't change the fonts that way. And have some. Change the color, but I can't actually change the font size. Weird. Well, I would change the font size of all these. So <clears throat> I'm holding, there's not too many, so I'm just going to hold down my control key and pick them all. And then I'm going to change the font size to be, <clears throat> excuse me, 14 to make it bigger. Well, now they're bigger than that. So now i got to move things a little bit to make them fit. That's all right. I'll start with this one. Move it over a bit. Take this one. I'm watching this dot, this dot, 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 making sure I don't go over it. And you might say to yourself, well, you know, you're only in thousands of labels when you get in the ten thousands. Then it may not fit, right? But I could always do this. I got this item number that's really big. Maybe I'm going to bring that down a little bit. And then I've got this that's a little, dates a little bit bigger. I can bring that down. So now I've given myself more room on these. So I can make them expand them out a bit if I want to. And then I know I should, I don't think I'll ever sell anything that I'll make more than 10,000, you know, in the tens of thousands on, so. But if I wanted to go all the way up to that line, I could. It's fine. No, maybe my overall, if this was something I was doing for decades, I could hit in the hundred thousands, who knows. But anyway, I could go all the way over there if I want to. And there it is. Pretty good. Uh, some people have asked me, can you center it? Oh, you can do it, yeah. Format whatever way you want. If you wanted to go like here and have these center in here, you know, go up there and again hit uh, format and just center them. You can do that. You can do whatever you want, basically, okay? One of the things that people notice is that these ones in the grand total come up with this heavy bar at the top. There is a way to turn that off, but 
personally, I don't mind that too much. I kind of like the way that looks. You might also notice that on the group subtotals, it comes up with a double bar. I like that too, you know. So I kind of leave that. But if you didn't want those on there, if you didn't want any, you know, maybe you didn't want any of these on there, you can actually turn off the grid around it too. Uh, I don't remember if you can do it from here. I don't think you can. But there are properties on each of these controls that you can invoke. And I think all you get to do is double click on it. No, you have to go to design view to do that, I think. Well, no, you can right click, hit property, and now that'll bring up the property for this particular field on, on a record, okay? And now I'm on a record. If I was on here, it'd open up the field for the footer, all right? But I go in here, and there are properties about the grid line to make it bigger, uh, to give it a, a style if you, if you want to. Um, you can change the line, the color of it, whatever you want to do. You have full ability to go in and do any of these. As long as you get the data coming up looking right, I don't care what you do as far as the colors and all that go. Except make them look readable, okay? Don't throw in really, ah, really crazy stuff, okay? I won't, that won't impress me too much. It'll just show me that you were just messing around. Make things look like, right. I got to tell you, I've had students who have built some unbelievably beautiful reports, you know. If you have any kind of artistic endeavor whatsoever, this is going to be a place where you can really use it. Uh, you might notice my, my item type is actually big for what I've got in that field. I could actually close that down a bit if I wanted to, okay? One of the things that people ask me, well, do I have to have the item type there, you know, with all this blank? Can I move it in? You can. You can actually move it in like this, and there you go. But now that's kind of been lost, okay? Um, so sometimes what I'll do is, believe it or not, I'll actually uh, put the, the header so it comes up underneath this, okay? What I have to do is I have to put another header up here and push this into the other header. I know that doesn't make sense for you, to you right now, but if you play around with with the, moving these things, you, you'll see that you can do things like that. I don't think I can do that from here. Let me see. Can I go up? Yeah. See how it did that? Well, no, it didn't. It didn't do it on the rest of them. Don't do that. I'm controlling Z to get back to where it was right now. But anyway... But I do that sometimes. I, you know, people want everything flush left, so I move that in, you know, and I, I just work on this a little bit. Oh, I closed down that item, and look at what it did to the caption up here. Well, turns out you can edit the caption if you want to. And I can even make this two lines if I want to. So I'm going to close that down a little bit. And I think it's Alt. No, that's not right. It's Control. Control, and that does that now. And now I've got that, you know, and you see it actually widened it there so I can see it a little better. And I can even close it down more now, I bet, if I wanted to. You know, one of the things people always, oh, I want these to be centered. Oh, yeah, sure, absolutely. And you can select them individually and do them, or you can select the whole thing at once. Ah, oh, geez, it doesn't do that. Man, isn't that weird? I wonder if I hold down shift. Yeah, I can hold down shift and go to the end, okay. And then I can do this, all right. And again, it's a lot like what you could do in... Uh, in uh, uh, PowerPoint, you know, it's the same kind of uh, formatting stuff that you do here. But that's what I'm basically going to do here now for the rest of this is just format this better um, so I can see things better. Now, one of the things I've been asked is can I add labels and stuff here? For instance, I you say three here, but it doesn't say, uh, you know, what, what, what three what, you know. I could come over here and see this blank space out here. This blank field, you know, it's basically null right now. I could go out there and I could just type in um, amount. Or how about count? I'll type in count equals. And it's in there now. It actually just dumped a label in there for you. It took a label control and put it in there for you, okay? Really nice. I mean, it used to be we used to actually have to go in design mode and put that in, put that label in there in order to do that. And I think in one in the tutorial, I actually do that at one time. I go into the design view to create a label. But the truth is, you can do it right here, right? Now, I got, I could, I could format that. I could bring it over like that. Uh, one thing that can I say book count equals? 
Well, yeah, I can, believe it or not. One of the things I could do is open that up in design mode. I'm going to save this first, okay? I'm kind of off the script right now, doing some things I haven't done in a while, so I want to make sure I don't mess these up. But see, here it is right here, count. And I can actually make that an expression. So to do that, I'm going to say equal to, I want to have that field called uh, the, the, the name of the um, um, foreign key field, so LNG auction star. You know what? This won't work. It hit, just hit me because it's go, it'll put the primary key value in here. No, we can't do it this way. I'll, I'll show you how to do this when we get to uh, uh, lesson lesson six. Okay, that we need to have this need, can only be done through a join. It just occurred to me. But anyway, but that's how I would do it. Is I could make this into a substring and then concatenate it to the name of that uh, the name that should be uh, coming from that field. Okay. But if I wanted to work here, I could. I don't recommend it. I recommend working from the from the uh, uh, layout view as much as you can. Okay. When you might want to work here is if you want something that maybe overrides a. Uh, I want to label that just free floats out here next to this. I could do that, but I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to go out to here. I'm going to add some others. So I got count there. I could have said, could have said group count or something like that. I could have uh, come up here and said uh, group count. Oops. Okay. And then over here, maybe I'll just say totals. nice that way. You know, and I, again, I go out and get the, the form and see it looks like that. That looks nice. Um, what about this stuff at the top? Does query auction mean anything to anybody? No, it doesn't. So, I want to make this auction. You know, an auction, and it, it puts this little symbol here. If you want it, fine. I don't. I don't need to I mean, I know this is a report, so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to move this over so it's a little bit more in line with everything underneath it. And I could change the background of this to be something different. I often do that. I don't like this, seeing this pale blue all the time. So I'll go back there and I'll make it maybe a darker blue and make this a uh, lighter color. For something, I'll make it bold and I'll make it, um, I'll make it white. Again, use standard colors. I've been forgetting to do that. I meant to. All right. Use standard colors where you can. Nothing. Something different. Oh, that's the same one. Yeah, I like this really dark one. You know, if I didn't want that all the way flush, I could always bring it in, whatever. But. You might have noticed that it also put these two on here, which are the date and time of the report. That's kind of nice. Uh, usually I want that all the way over to the other end. So I'll go to the whole, all the way to the other margin. And you can see I can also resize things from here too if I want to. Again, I could, I'm, I'm working from design view right now, but I sh could just as easily be working from layout view, or I should be working from layout view. And you see what it's going to look like now. A report is rendered. Okay, what that means is it takes a snapshot. When the query runs and it, get, it, it comes back with the information, it's doing what's called a view of your data. And it happens at that time. So the report that's connected to it, it happened at that time. If while I'm building this report right now, somebody went in and changed the data, it wouldn't automatically change here. It's not like a form, all right? And so one of the things I tend to do when I'm creating a report 
is I shut down anybody's ability to add more data to the database, okay? I basically take it down and I build it and then I put it back there, okay? Uh, there's another thing you have to watch out for on reports while I'm thinking about it. Sometimes a person will begin creating a report, printing a report out, and while they're printing, now printing actually does happen in real time. While they're printing it, it could actually change, they could change the data. And so you may have things that were in one state at the beginning of the report and another state at the end of the report. That's why generating a report this way is important. Because once it's generated, once it's there, you print it as, even after it, while it's printing, it, if people were to go and change the values in the back, it's still a view of what it was at that date and time. So I always leave the state and time. I like that on there. I always leave that. Sometimes I may put it in the in the footer of the report. And that's fine too. You can do that. You may want to put your name up here, you know, that you did it, you know, and that's fine too. Or you may want to do that in the footer. In fact, I'm going to do that. Let's do that in the footer. Okay. I'm going to go back to design view. I'm going to go back to the footer of the report now. And since I made the header dark, that dark blue color, I'm going to do the same thing on the footer. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change the background. Um, so, to be a dark blue. Now, I'm doing that, I can't see these too well anymore. So, what I'm going to do is make these, um, yeah, I'll do it this one too while I'm at it. Look ahead. I'm going to make that a lighter shade of, of blue, the, the text. So that looks may look white to you, but that's actually a very light shade of blue. So that stands out really nice. And uh, in this one, I'm just going to say, created by John. And I can't see that very well, so I'm just going to go over here, and I'm going to use the paintbrush and bring it over here. And as it's created by John, and it's the same. I expand that a little bit to get created by John in, okay? Boy, maybe I should have done it right here where I got two of them. Can I do that? You bet. I'm going to go back, control Z to the bit where it was before, and I'm going to say, take these two, select them both. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Control Z to get back. Select them both like that. Right, left click. I mean, it's right, right click, right click. And do a merge you know bring those two together and now it's only going to do it here because it's it this is the footer of the report this is the only time you see it if i had done that same thing up here it would have done it on all the footers for the groups too if i did it in, a re, in here okay you don't want in other words you don't want to do it where you actually have data or anything like that okay you want to do it where you got some free but now that's one thing by itself and i could do creating by god and you know what? I'm going to make that a little bit different than the other ones. I'm going to put that over here, and I'm going to make it white. Uh, I'll make it the blue color again. I'm going to make it italics and keep it smaller. So this is created by John. So if I wanted to put the date and time down here or somewhere, you'll see that if you go up here to page, uh, where is it at now? Um, design. You got this thing for uh, uh, date and time. You click on that. And it'll allow you to put a date and time in here if you want to. Uh, date or time or both in there. Uh, just like it did at the top. I got it at the top, so I'm not going to do that. Title and logo I would stay away from. All right. It, logo, it puts that record, uh, that report logo in that was up at the top. And you really don't need that. And title basically takes this auction. puts it, Now, it already put that in there, so it's up there already. Okay. But that's the title block right now, all right? And I guess you can only put those in there once anyway, so that's good. But one of the things that I do a lot is I put a page number in here. And you'll see where it says page one of one. If I come back in, I'm going to save this. I'm going back into design view. And you'll see the page footer has that page one of one in it. You can put whatever you want to in it, but that's where it came from. Uh, I, it was basically dropped in from doing that page. It wouldn't do it on the report footer, right? Because it would only be shown on the last one. We want to show it on every page, so it's it's being placed in the page footer. So there's where your page footer comes in. 
And again, you can make that look whatever way you want it to look too. Um, if I wanted to make that look like, um, where's it at here? Oh, it's right here. Maybe I want that to stand out a little bit. I want it to be, uh, um, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot where it was. Okay, I want to make it bold and italics. I could do that. You know, I can make it big or whatever. You know, you get the idea. All right. Now you might think to yourself, boy, when you're doing this, so Dr. Huffman, and you went to back to back to look at the report, it was just something you scrolled through. There weren't pages. That's because that's its default view. Um, in other words, when I came back here and I looked at the report, went here and did report view. It's something I scroll through. There's no pages here. And even if I tried to print this out like that, it would just it would look like this. And that, that's not what you want. What you do instead is, oops, go up here and do print preview. And now you'll see it looks like how it's going to actually be printed. you got 11 pages in here. Bam, 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 bam. And you could cycle through those pages hitting this navigation thing. Did you see how the, at the top on the first one you had the report header, but it's not there on subsequent pages? So, you know, you want to do this and see what's going on. Maybe I want to do go out and do something here to make that look better uh, for each one of those. Um, you cycle through and you see all this. And you can see our conditional formats are coming up in the right colors. Bam. Uh, play around with it. And, and again, there's some, one of the things people sometimes ask me is, we well, got this Christmas, but then it stopped there at the end, you know. How can I keep them together? Well, believe it or not, there are things you can do to do that. And I was just, so, while I'm, since I'm here, I'm going to come back and I'm going to finish up um, uh, formatting this. But I want to show you some properties that you can actually set in the report that are going to be very helpful for you, helpful to you. So I'm going to go back again and I'm going to get out of this print preview mode. Just hit this close to do that. I'm going back to... Um, Layout view. I actually I could do it from anywhere right now, but go back to layout view, and I'm going to open up the report properties. All right, and what you right off the bat, what one that you want to set is the caption. Again, what that is is what this tab up here says. So you could say whatever you want for a report. I'm just going to say auction. I don't want it to say RPT auction. I just want it to say auction, and you see it actually changed it up here right away when I did that. Hit my save to save that. Now, the other item that you always need to set on a report, any report, come down here to the bottom, and you'll see one that one of these. These are called event properties. In the event that there's no data to put in this report, I don't want it to open. See the sun that says on no data. Come here and hit your down. And you have this one that says MCR on no data. Bound that to it. Okay. Now, if for some reason something went wrong and the query didn't bring back data, you know, maybe suddenly overnight they, you know, they, they, they're printing, maybe they're printing this for just a certain range of data and they didn't have any auctions that, that, finished or, or, or they finished and there were no bidders so there's no records. Would it make sense for a report to be generated? No, it doesn't. So I wrote a macro and it's right here in the navigation pane called MCR on no data and all you have to do is put that on every report you do no matter what the report is do this. Put that on there and it will keep it from opening up if there's no data. When we get to applications, we'll actually do some things where we filter data out of our reports and we'll actually filter some where there is no data and you'll see this working for you, okay? But for now, just make sure you do this. It's always, a, usually, I, usually I'll build the whole report and then do this. You can do it at any time, okay? In the tutorial, I think I did it at the very end. You can do it first. If, it, if you're just worried that you may forget it, put it in there right away. You can do it, okay? It's in there. So that's the, that's the property. The only two properties for the report that you should have to ever do are this one that says on no data 
and then changing the caption. That's it. Everything else leave it leave the same. Okay, for the report. Now, what if I want, as I said, to make a group appear on a new page or, or keep it together on a new page? Right? To do that, go up and highlight one of the group tuples. And I'm doing that by moving over here. Alright? And you can see now it moved to the scene that says group header zero, I think, or whatever. Alright? One of there's options in here for now about how to do things. So you've got to keep together, yes. Uh, force a new page. If you want a, every group to be on its own page, you can do it just before the se section or just after the section, or you can do it before and after, which means no other group would appear on that page. In other words, right now, if I do before that section, I think what will happen is if it can't, if it runs over onto another page, uh, I'm sorry, it's a, yeah, if it runs on, it'll try to keep it together on, on the new page before the section starts. But that doesn't keep another one from happening if it could still fit on the same page, all right? If I really wanted a group to be on by itself on a page, and it could run over onto another page too, but in other words, it's isolated, and then I would have another group I could do before and after. I'm going to do that, by the way. I'll do that so you can see it, okay? So now I've done that, and I'm going to go back and look at a report view. I'm sorry, in print preview view. And what you'll see is the I don't, that didn't go right. That didn't do what it was supposed to do. It should have done it after the section. Okay, so I got to play around with this. I don't always, rem I don't remember these things very much. It's, it's not intuitively obvious. But that is where you go to do it. You go and, uh, again, I'm going to do it again. I think I meant to do it just after the section. I think that's where you, no, no, I think it's before the section. Let's see. Let's find out. Again, I'm off the, I'm off the script right now, so I'm trying things out. Force a new page before the section. I don't think this is going to do what I think it does. Keep together keeps the records together, but I don't think it keeps the label with the record. It keeps the group heading with the records. Let's try before and see what happens. Again, I got a print preview. Oh, yeah, that did it. Okay, so you see now I've got book on a page. i got history on a page, music, sports, and sports. Um, Oh, boy, that just that fit on a page, too. I thought I had more than that. Oh, sports cards. Sports cards, I got a lot more than could fit on one page. So it will go on to a second page, and a third page, and a fourth page. I got a lot of them in here. I used to be a baseball card dealer way back when. Uh, in fact, they were the last ones in there, I guess. Oh, no, 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 no. This is where they end, and then I get more. And I got Christmas, that's where it ends. And see, now I'm at the bottom of my report and I got that. I, if I wanted this to be on its own page, I could do that too. I could go in here and I could do a, uh, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting where I'm at. Okay, I could go in here and I could go down to the very bottom, uh, highlight, and I wanted to be in layout view. Uh, go down to the very bottom and highlight that report footer and I could always say force a new page on that too force a new page before a section yes okay good save that back to print preview and now if I go to the very end of that report you've got it all by itself would you want to do that I don't know see this is what I I'm not too crazy about though look at the page Header is there too. Oh, you know, I guess I do want that. Yeah, because I want to know what these mean. So actually, that is a good thing. All right. Again, you have flexibility to do whatever you think you need in order to make your report look good. Uh, right now, this is starting to look good, but it's got a long way to go. I'm gonna, I would do things like uh, select these, make them look different. Uh, oh, there is one other thing I need to show you. 
let me let me finish this first, and I'll show you something else that's really neat. Uh, that that would be really handy. I'm going. Let's see, I was in this color palette. I'm going to make this a little bit of a lighter blue, and make it a darker um, font. I think I'll make it a dark blue font. Yeah, just gonna make it bold too. There you go. That's looking good. Now, there's a thing that's called the alternating format. Alternating, I think it's called alternating row format, but it's really tuples, all right? And it exists not only for records, but also for groups. I could, I could, and you kind of see that happening here right now. See how this goes from white to a gray to white? But this is going white to gray to white, okay? I really like doing the alternate for records. I don't like doing it for this. And there is a way to turn it off. And you see, look at even the, in the footer, it did it too. Bam, bam. Now, some people might say, well, that's actually kind of nice because I know this one goes with this one and I know this one goes with this one. Yeah, I know. You could do that if you want to, all right? But me, it's just as easy. There are other things I could do to make this even look better. So I'm going to play with the alternate alternating formats a little bit here. So I'm just going to select a record, any record. doesn't matter which one, okay? And see where it says alternate row color, right? Click the down on that. We did this in the data sheet. I'm going to do it here. Maybe I want the background of the first record of each one of those things to be uh, this real pale blue right here. No, you can't see that very well. I'm going to do it a little bit darker. Uh, I'll use this one right here. Okay. All right. Oh, that just did the alternating one. I'm sorry. I did the wrong one. Actually, what I really wanted to do is um, set the default background for all this to be... So I'm just going to select this whole thing. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Format. See, I can. Yes, I can. Okay, I can. I can. Okay, I selected the whole tuple. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to make it... I want it to be light, so I'm going to hit this light blue. That's not that light. Let's try it again. This light blue here. And then I want the alternate color to be a little bit darker blue from that one. So I'm going to use this one. And now I see how it came up like that? Yeah, it looks bam, 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 bam. You know, I wonder why I'm getting this yellow. Let me look at, I'm going to look at the uh, the actual report at this point. Okay, see, that's what it's looking like now. And I kind of like that. I don't like this white and gray alternating here that's happening. Alright, so one of the things I want to do there, <coughs> excuse me, is um, I want to change this maybe to a uh, some kind of pale color, uh, but have, have it pale through the whole thing. Alright, so I'm going to go back to layout view and I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to make its background format. Make its background. That would be a good thing to do there. Tell you what, I don't want to make it pale. I want to make it darker. I'm going to make it this dark. There we go. And I will do the same thing on the footer. So I'm going to go there and make it that dark. By the way, it's going to always hold the last one you did, so that makes it nice for you. Now, I know that washed out my totals and group counts, so I'm going to fix that a little bit. I'm going to make that a, uh, a very dark blue. Is there a real dark blue here? Yeah, there's one right there. Okay. Now, that's looking like that. You might notice, too, I mean, when I, I, I could give a little bit more room at the bottom here, and I'm going to show you that. But i got to do that through going into the design mode. So I'll do that in a second. But let me get all my colors right and all that. So I like this a lot, okay? One of the things you might want to do is maybe you don't want these things to be white in the background or anything like that. You can make them clear. Um, you can go here, for instance, and see if I remember how to do that. Open up its properties and make the background the back color is it the back color or the back style i forget yeah back style transparent and now i did that how about that 
And then I may want to do the same thing on these. You know, maybe I just want um, the property. And then select multiple at a time and do the same thing. Back color, back style, transparent. And then it sees through it to the thing. <coughs> so that's kind of nice. Looking good. Maybe I want to do the same thing down here. Uh, you know, maybe I just don't like these white backgrounds, you know. And I could go here and give it a background that's a little bit different. Uh, maybe I want to make that that dark, same as the dark blue that's above, right? I can't remember what, what, what I did for that one. Let's see, which one was it that I picked? I go up here and I look, it should, I don't think it would highlight it. Uh, well, since I'm here, I may as well show that. Um, I could always find out what color I have made something by going and looking at its properties and see what the bad color is. And there it is. It's that code right there. So I'm just doing Google, do control C on that. And then I'm going to go to the back color for this here now and make the back color. It says background one. Make it that. I'm going to control V into it. And then when I'm done, you see, yeah, that turned right away. How about that? So that's okay. Again, you figure out what colors you want to use and all that. I'm just doing this to show you different ways to format. Save once in a while. But you want your auction to be centered. You can do that. You can make it a bigger font if you want to. I do these. You know. Again, you will spend a lot of time working on this uh, particular object simply because it's got a lot of flexibility. And you get to do a lot of things with it. You know, I don't like how this profit field is so big compared to yours. In fact, notice I got some of these that wrapped automatically. Maybe I want to make those a little bit bigger. So I'm going to... Again, I don't think it's ever going to get bigger than 10,000. So now i got to go through and all of them. Kind of rearrange them a bit. <gasps> that happens. Do something wrong. Control Z. Get back. I had multiple pick at the same time and I tried to resize them and try to do them all at once. So that looks good. And that looks good. You know, you may want to eyeball things. I'd like to have the sale and expenses to be about the same size, so eyeball things a little bit. You want to know the exact width of these? Go and look at the width property for those and they'll tell you. So you could make them exactly the same thing. Might be a way to align them that way too, and then maybe I want yeah. And see when I was doing that, it actually stretched this one across anyway, so that was kind of nice. Um, you could close them down, I think. You see how they put extra space in here? I think there's a way to close it down. I'm not sure. I you, I know you can do it from design. I don't know if there's a way to do it from here, but anyway, that's looking pretty good actually. Maybe I went the. Uh, the categories to be centered, I would usually do that, make it bold, you know, maybe make it really stand out, maybe I'll make it uh, 12 or something like that for it, um, you know, if I'm going to do that, I may as well make the group count the same color too, wait, why did that get a different, yeah, okay, there it is, okay. You know, actually, I think they made this one maybe a little bit too dark. We'll fix it. See the kind of things that you have to... I mean, I. it's amazing. Sometimes I will knock out the structure and of the database really fast. Yet take a couple days to really make this th things look good. Eh, I don't know. I like it better the other way. I'm going to leave it the other way. Okay. So I've got that. And again, if you wanted to center these, you could. I, could I, I would actually usually center these. I would center these. Center these. And of course, i got to do whatever else I have to do in the footers and the headers to make that happen there. Almost looks like you're building a spreadsheet, doesn't it? Anyway, I, again, I don't want these whites, so I'm going to get rid of those. I, I, I'll just make them, I don't want to make them, the, I'm going to make them transparent. I'm going to give them a background color, make them a little bit different color, just so they stand out a bit. 
So, looking good. Looking pretty good now. Alright. Um, but, again, I'm looking at it this way. Let's look at it in print preview and see how things look. Okay, the first page isn't too bad. I like that. Looks good. Come down here. I mean, here's my page one of 15. See, my, my page footer is down there. Uh, not quite as good. Why? Because I got that alternating color on yet still on the group. So let's fix that. So now what I want to do is I want to go on, in this area, highlight it. Uh, actually, this is the color I want. This is the default, but you can see what happens on history. It changes to something else. So this same color, I wanted to make it the alternating color. And again, I could go up there to format and do the alternating color and find that one. Okay. Another way to do it is I go to this one's properties. So I highlight that, open up its properties. And you see it says uh, the back color is this. The alternating color is something different. I want to take this, cop, control C, copy it, and then go to the alternating color, make it control V, and now you'll see that it changed at all. Okay. Now that doesn't look very nice here because I got all you know, I you know, oh, it, kind of, those two run into each other and all that. But when I do the uh, um, print, it looks really good actually. It probably look a lot better. So. I go here, and that looks like that, and that looks like that, and that looks, well, didn't do, I think, forgot to do it in the, in the footer, too. I just did it in the header, so I'll go back and fix it in the footer. But you see, it does look a little bit better here. Now, I may want to close this up so I get a little bit more um, border around here and all that and extend it. And I'll show you how to really refine things on that kind of stuff in a second. First, let me go back and fix my, uh, my uh, group footers so that I got an alternating color on them. So again, I'm going to go to this one's and open up its properties. And it's really the same value as the other one was. Control C and make it a Control V. And now that should be done. Okay, if I click in here, it should be there on anyway. Okay, got that. But again, I may want to look at it this way or I may want to look at it, oops. May want to look at it this way, and this way actually looks better. To tell you the truth. Okay. By the way, these these uh, you're seeing these uh, lines around this. You can get rid of those. There's a property that says border, and you can make it transparent, and that will go away. Well, since I'm saying this and taking this much time, it is. We'll do a little bit more. Let's make it really nice. So I'm going to go back and pick these. Let's, let's pick all of them in, in, in here, all right? So I'm just going to pick them all. And then I'm going to open up the properties. And you'll see, no, you won't, because I don't have anything in here. It's only going to be on the fields that actually have a control in them. Let me go back here. These ones that actually have a border around them, let's pick them. Okay. My guess is these do too, but you can't see it, so I'm not going to worry about it. All right, now I'm going to open the properties for those, and you should see border style solid. Make it transparent, and now those borders all went away. Now when I go out and view it in pre preview. This is what it looks like. Now, you got to consider, you know, I, I know it's spirit. I'd probably be, if I was just delivering this report in a digital format like this, people would love it, okay? If I was delivering it as a printout, an actual hard copy, somebody's going to tell me, that wastes a lot of ink. And I'd agree. So I'd have to make sure that I, you know, I... I Think about it. You know, what are you, how's your report usually going to be rendered? 
is it going to be rendered as something that people will look at it on the screen and then you went to spend a lot of time making colors and formats look good and all that? Or is it going to be something that's going to be mainly printed on black and white printers, you know? Because in that case, you've got a lot of things to consider. Obviously, the colors all change. They, you want to make a grayscale at, at best, uh, or at worst, I should say. At best, you want to make it black and white, okay? But what about your conditional formats? You know, again, grayscale, you can at least use grain things on here. Uh, but there aren't too many other things you could do. The other, only other thing I could think about would be that uh, you make it maybe italic for uh, things that are neutral and uh, underlined if they are a loss and normal, you know, if just keep it normal if it's, if it's a profit, you know. But those are the kind of things you really need to consider when you're doing this. Always look at the header, uh, the first page. Always look at the last page. You get to the last page to see what it looks like. You know, you want you want to make sure that things look really well. Looking at this, I'd say I'm almost there. You know, but I can see right now there's borders around this label right here. Uh, there's uh, so I probably want to get rid of that. I know it's hard for you to see, but there's a little gray border around that. I probably want to have a little bit more space here on this leading label here. Maybe less space over here, but yeah, I'm not going to worry about. It. But looking at the bottom here, how that sharply ended right after, but I got some space at the top, okay? So I want to really, really, really refine this thing now. So I'm going to go out to Design View. And on Design View, I, could, I got a lot more flexibility to move things, okay? So I could, you know, of course, I could have done this in Layout View too, make that a little bit more, so I got a little bit more uh, girth around it. I could bring this down. Now, what I want to do here is make sure you don't have anything selected. But see how I got for the header? I want to give it a, just another pixel or two at the top. Okay? And same thing here in the group. I want to give it another pixel or two at the bottom. In fact, I'm going to give it more than a couple pixels. I'm going to give it about four or five to do that. Okay? Because that's going to be on a page all by itself the way I've got it right now. Right? Okay? Another thing, and I, and I said I've got I've got a, a pale um, border around this field right here. Turns out I've got them on these too. So I'm going to select. Those. I've already taken care of those. It's not around those though. It's interesting. It doesn't happen around the labels. It shows it, but it's really not there. Okay, I'm going to go to those. Oh, man, does it let me keep them selected? Why is that? I'm going to do this the hard way. Move up to property sheet there. Okay. Border stop. Well, you see, it doesn't, isn't it? Well, I want to make it transparent on all of them anyway. Let's do that. If, if you do this where you have multiple selected and you bring it up and there's no value in there, that means that one of them has a different value than the rest of them. At least one of them has a different value than the rest of them. Uh, but I want them all to be transparent anyway, so I'm going to say that. I'm going to go out and see what that looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I like it so far. You know, that group count is a different color than that, I just realized. Somehow I didn't get the right color in there. Let's fix that too while we're at it. Whoops. So what I wanted to do, I don't know what I did wrong. I should have gone up there and copied its value in the header and then come down here and copy it to both of those. Both the back color and the alternating back color. Now that'll be the same thing. Okay. And now when I go out and look at that and report to you, it should look good. Okay. But see, now when I look at that, those blend together, don't, doesn't it? It'd be really nice if I had like a break or something between the different groups in this long form like that. I mean, when I, again, when I go out to. Uh, 
print view, it's not going to be a problem because each one of those are on its own page. Somebody once asked me, what if I really wanted that report header to be on each page? Then just move it down into the, into the page header. You could do that. You just move it all down into the page header. You do a, basically you go and highlight the the whole thing, cut it, and paint, and then give yourself enough room at the, in the in the page header, and then paste it in there. You may have to jockey things around to make it look good again, but you could do that. All right, I'm liking this, but again, I would like to have some kind of break in between those. So what I'm going to go do, and you've got, and the reason I'm doing this, I'm going to show you a couple of controls that could help you with formatting, that I use a lot, that most people ignore, that I have really been helpful over the years. I want to put something that looks like a break right there, okay? Um, you know, because I've, it, it, I've got a, 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 some prominent colors here, you know, I, I'm going to put a real heavy blue line, basically, that breaks right there, okay? So I can see each of the groups as if they're separated. So what I'm going to go up here and do is I'm going to go to design view again. And then in, I'm going to close this down so you can see more, okay? In the group footer, I'm going to actually put a little few more pixels, all right? And then, there you go, okay? Then up here, you have this control that's called a line control. Click on that, and then come down here, and somewhere in there, you'll have this little symbol now. Click on it, and then drag, and go across. I'm going to go across the whole canvas for the, for the group footer. And you'll see it put a line in there. Now, before you do anything else, while it's still highlighted, and if you laid it out straight, hopefully, if you didn't, you're going to have to come in here and jockey it around on that. Go up to Format again, and do the sh hit Shape Outline. And now you can put a color for it. So I'm going to do that really dark blue color, okay? But one of the other things I could do is I could expand its width. So do line thickness, and I'm going to put this, I'm going to go to the second last one. And that puts a really thick board line on there. Now, I really want that to be at the bottom here, okay? Um, so I could do that. I could jockey it in there, you know. Or if that is good enough, I'm happy with that, I could go and bring that up and close it right to there okay now let me show you what we just what just happened I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna see the report and look at that now lot more readable isn't it I like that and I guarantee it you boss would like that a lot too and you might see here you know I got a little bit more space at the top of of the records than I do at the bottom. Again, go out and fine tune things. Go out there and, okay, and this, so right here, see how I've got a pixel here but none at the bottom? I'm gonna put a pixel in there. If I wanted to put more, I could do that, you know? Uh, but you move it around like that, okay? And now that's done. These are pretty much okay. That looks pretty good, I would say. Um, that's, that's gonna be fine because it's always gonna be at the bottom of the page. That's out of there. You know, maybe I wanted to make uh, that, give that a little bit of a color in the back, too. I could do that. I could go to the canvas here for the report footer and give it a, a color of some kind. Let's give it that that uh, pale blue, all right, or some blue. I think I use that one in there. I use the, this tone, these tones. Yeah, there it is. Is that right? I mean, that looks like it's a little bit off, too. Uh, which one was it? Probably. Tell you what, find out. Let's go into this one. Look up its properties. It's this value right here. Come down here to the canvas at the bottom. The, the uh, report footer canvas. Make it, oh, well, it is the same value. Okay, just they looked like it to me for some reason. Sometimes I have, you know, my eyes are getting old. Anyway, let's go over here, and again, I've got this on a page by itself. Let's put it kind of centered here or something like that. Okay, like that, all right? You know, one of the things I could have done, too, is if I didn't want this create John, created by John here, maybe I want it all by itself down here. Let's go down here. I'm going to take out this created John. I'm going to 
just uh, delete the text. Okay, just keep it blank. I'm going to go up here to the top. Let me save this first. I'm going to go up to Design View and take a label out of here. There's the label. Come down here and I can put something like that. Format it a little bit better. There we go, something like that. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, maybe I'll put it flush against the other one. It's up there right there. That looks good. And I'm going to go back here and do this. So there you go. A nice report. And this is the kind of thing I want you to do. Uh, not only on, this, on the tutorials, following along with me, but of course on your homework assignment. Set, which is what I will cover in class, and then, oh, not, I'm sorry, not homework, you're going to have an extra credit assignment, and you're going to have a project, and then I want you to build something like this for your project, so I think that's it. I know this has been a long lecture, but obviously there was a reason for it, and I hope you get, got something out of it, and I hope you're excited about doing this. Again, I think it's one of those things that industrial engineers are asked a lot to do, they spent a lot of their time doing it. Um, the queries will will uh, there's a, a good section about queries at the uh, the beginning of L04, and one of your extra credit assignment is to replicate some of the example queries I put out there and create a couple of your own. They're all select queries, uh, so it'll give you a chance to really get used to doing those too. And again, so queries are at the heart of doing reporting, so you really want to get good at doing them. And Microsoft has done a superb job, in my opinion, of helping you build both queries and reports. So, uh, yeah, I've been working on this for about an hour, 20 minutes, hour, 30 minutes. You know what? If my boss came to me at the beginning of the morning and I had this done by the end of the day, he would be dancing on the ceiling. Seriously, okay? Right now, I know people that take absolutely weeks, sometimes months, to create what we just did in just an hour or something, okay, using traditional methods. I actually, believe it or not, know people that use Access for nothing more than its report generator. They will have their database in some other method, even in Excel spreadsheets, and they'll link to it from an, an access database. No tables or anything in that database, just links. But they use the, they can use a query because the queries that Microsoft has not don't just work on access tables. They work on any data source that it can link to. And then they go out and you build a report based on it because it is so easy to do compared to other methods. There are other more sophisticated report builders out there like Crystal Reports. Oracle and almost every other database package now has a report builder and they're all getting better and easier to use, okay? But if you but for for companies that especially have uh, constraints on their or budgets, uh, constrained budgets for software purchases and all that, it's really cool to know that you got a, 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 a such a nice flexible method of creating reports in a tool that's relatively cheap. So We'll leave the tutorial at this, and again, I'm going to have an in-class portion of this where I'll go over your uh, your extra credit assignments and your project, and I may talk, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about reports and why why they're valuable. Those. So, but this is what you're going to watch as part of the, as your lecture for lesson four. So, thank you very much.